Hey there, I'm Russell Zachary Fieser with Alta3 Research. We're a training partner with the OpenStack Foundation, and we have an incredible class that teaches to the points of the Certified OpenStack Administrator exam. Today I'm going to give away a bit of that class through this video training. Specifically, our objective is going to be learning how to work with heat. I'd encourage you to subscribe to our channel as we're always creating new material. If you start watching our videos and saying, hey, Alta3 Research might know what they're talking about. I think I want to take training with these guys. If you'd like to pass the Certified Administrator exam, if you just need to know more about OpenStack, we offer public and private training for individuals, for corporations, whatever it is, I want you to reach out to us. At the end of this video, I'll give you some easy ways to get in contact with us. But until then, let's get started learning about heat. Heat fulfills the orchestration component of OpenStack. So what is orchestration? Well, we want to define in a template, a cloud formation template, a heat orchestration template is the new hot way, heat orchestration template, hot way of doing things. We want to be able to define uh, resources, uh, infrastructure, services, applications running inside of our infrastructure. We want to be able to automate the deployment of these. We want a seamless automation that just always works. Once we've defined the template properly, we don't want to worry that our complex infrastructure isn't spawned, isn't created correctly. So what we're going to do today is take a template I've already written. We're going to break it apart so that we understand, admittedly, the, the simple components of this simple template. And then we're going to run it. And we're going to create what's then referred to as a stack. Once we've created resources with a heat template, we call those created resources a stack. Let's get started. OK, so we're going to learn about heat in just a moment. But before then, I want to explain the environment we're going to work in. We are currently right here. How did we get here? Well, this is, and, and what is this? This is an Alta 3 Research remote desktop training environment. This is what we give every student who takes training with us. This remote desktop is reached by signing in through a portal through your favorite browser. No plugins required, just sign in and boom, remote desktop shows up. Once you're here, you have IP connectivity. That is to say, you could SSH to controller. Controller is where all of our OpenStack software is installed. You can also SSH over to Compute One or SSH over to Compute2. This is where hypervisors are running and we run virtual machines. So we have a landing zone, which we refer to as Beachhead, that's our desktop. We have a controller, that's where we install our OpenStack services. We have a Compute1, Compute2, that's where we're gonna run the virtual machines. Okay, so to get started, I'm gonna pop up a uh, terminal here, and I'm going to begin by SSHing to my controller. Now that I'm in controller, I'm going to go ahead and source my admin RC file. These files take on a lot of different names. Ultimately, they're open RC files, they're permission files, they're used specifically with OpenStack. What this does is allows me to just repetitiously now issue OpenStack commands, in this case, as admin, because I've sourced an admin OpenRC file. If you don't know what these are, we have a video that explains an OpenStack permission file. Run off and check that out right now and then come back to this video. By the way, if you're wondering why my prompt changed, don't worry about that too much. Student at controller admin. That's just in, uh, because I have a fancy RC file. I purposefully change the prompt of the command line I'm working at so that I can remember, oh, I'm, if I issue an OpenStack command that will be as admin. That's all that's happening there. Uh, very quickly, I want to review OpenStack. Stack list. This is going to show me the stacks that have already been created. Remember we said a stack is a set of resources that's been launched by heat. I don't see any currently. So we'll come back to that and hopefully when we're done here, we'll see a, a something in our stack list. Our next command is going to be a flavor list. This is a very basic OpenStack command. It simply 
what's the size of the virtual machines I can launch? So there's one called M1 Tiny, small amount of RAM, half a gig, one virtual CPU versus M1 Extra Large, quite a bit of RAM, eight virtual CPUs. So uh, the difference would be like an iPad versus a workstation here. I'm just seeing how my system is set up. This isn't a uh, make or break for working with heat. It's just I'm going to reference some of these flavors a little bit later while working with heat. I'm going to do the same thing with my images. The images are the bootable uh, uh, part of the virtual machine that I can, can use to instantiate a VM. So that's OpenStack image list. And I see there's only one. It's called Ceros. Ceros is a test image. It was created for working specifically with clouds with OpenStack. A Cirrus cloud is high up in the atmosphere. It's a little wispy cloud we don't pay much attention to. This is supposed to be a little wispy virtual machine. It's only about, or, or operating system, it's only about 13 megs in size. So it, it satisfies a proof of concept, but I don't want to do any actual heavy lifting with this thing. Just see that it comes up and that's enough. So it's perfect for what we're trying to do here today and just see that heat can create something, create some infrastructure. So what we're going to create here with our template is a virtual machine and I want to be able to SSH into that virtual machine after we're done just to show proof of concept, right? In order to make that happen, I need to create a key pair right now. So to create a key pair, I'm going to issue OpenStack key pair create heat key is the name of the key pair that will be registered with Nova and then I want a copy of it so I can reference it when SSHing to a particular VM. So there I've created a key pair called heat key and I have my copy the heat key.priv is what I'll use to SSH to that virtual machine. I'm now going to change permissions on that file heat key.priv so that it's usable. Perfect. So now what I want to do is download a copy of the template that we're going to pass to Heat, the Heat engine that will ultimately create our stack. I'm going to download it, it's already pre-made, and then we're going to read it together so we all understand it. I'm now going to print it to the screen. So here's a very basic heat template, which is ultimately going to launch a virtual machine for us. Let's go over the major parts. The first part is a mandatory piece called version. It looks like a date. Uh, these dates correspond to different releases of heat. It lets heat know how the template will be structured. It also lets heat know what uh, features um, can be validated and supported. What sort of resources can ultimately get created? You know what to put here by going over to the OpenStack wiki and just searching on, uh, I believe it's a uh, heat template versions you can find. A description is an optional part that describes for us what the template actually does. So it's some comments. It's optional, but it would be highly recommended. Parameters are ultimately optional if uh, we don't want our users to be able to override settings within the template. If we want to make a very static template, hey, every time this template creates the exact same thing, we wouldn't want parameters. But if we want users to be able to pass values to the template, to override uh, maybe some default settings, uh, then we definitely need parameters. We'll circle back to this one after we review resources. This is absolutely mandatory. This is going to be ultimately what gets created. So in this basic version, I see that I'm going to create some Nova resources. Specifically, I want Nova to reference some network. 
I want Nova to reference some image. I want it to reference some flavor and I want it to reference some key. All for creating specifically a virtual machine. So let's see what it's supposed to reference here. In networks, I want to launch this virtual machine on a specific network. And that says get parameter network name. So if I circle up to network name, I see that it's simply defined as a string. I have no default setting there. The user must pass a value in order for this stack to ultimately work out because I must attach the VM to a network. The next piece is image. And I see I'm supposed to reference again a parameter called image ID. So let's go up to image ID. And I see that this is the image that should be used to launch this VM, this server. And the default value is zero. So I can specify that or not. If I didn't want the zeros, if I wanted like Fedora or Ubuntu and that image was available to me, I could reference that in the parameter. You'll see how we reference parameters in a moment. We do that when we actually uh, run the template. Next piece, I have a flavor. Uh, this is instant type. Let's go up to instance type. And I see that default is M1 tiny. So once again, I can specify a flavor if I don't want to use M1 tiny. Otherwise, M1 tiny is what will get used. Finally, I have a key name. Um, and my key name up here, I have no default value for it, so I'll have to apply some sort of key name. In this case, it's going to be the heat key that we created a moment ago. Okay, so that's a basic rundown of how a template's structured. Let's go ahead and hand this over to Heat and see if Heat can create something for us. Okay, so I'm going to try creating a stack from this template. I'm going to say, hey, Heat stack create so i want to create some resources a, a stack and i'm going to make sure that this first time it doesn't work and i'm going to do that by not specifying all the required parameters that i have to so i'm going to say hey open stack stack create this is the way i reference a template so heat zeros.yaml that was the name of the template we just looked at together So what I'm saying is OpenStack stack create from the template heat zeros.yaml and the parameter heat key is what I want to reference for um, the key name. And ultimately the stack I want to create is called test stack. So if I look at this, notice I didn't specify the network that this is supposed to launch on. And I don't have a default value for a network up here. Now, this might actually, you might actually get away with this. If there was only one network available, he might be smart enough to say, okay, well, there is only one network available. Let's go ahead and launch it on there. But that's not the case here. I have two networks. You'll see in a minute, I'll get into Horizon. We can visually look at the networks that are available. This won't work. So let's go ahead and issue it and see it not work. Perfect. We see the error, the parameter network name was not provided. It's not smart enough. He's saying, I'm not smart enough to make an assumption here. You must provide that information for me. So let's issue the same thing again, and this time let's provide it. Issue the same command, only this time I'm gonna include one more parameter. And there we go. We can see the creation is in progress. And there's our description that we saw before. Test stack is the stack currently being made. So if I need to know, how did the template run? Did my stack get successfully created or is did it fail? I can issue a simple command from the command line that's open stack stack event 
list test stack. So open stack stack event list. I want to see how the stack was created, specifically the one called test stack. And I can see when it was started, and in this case, I can see when it completed successfully. Of course, you'd see a failed if it didn't work. So now that I know my infrastructure was created, let's hop over to Horizon. And I'm signed in as admin already. I can see instances. Right there is test stack. So test stack was created with the image Ceros. Uh, if I want to hop over to network and look at a network topology, I can see indeed that there's the VM. There's the server that we just created, test stack. So if I want to, let's move back to instances. You can see here that heat key is the key it was launched with as well. I should be able to SSH into that. Now, one of the uh, things that, that I could have done, I didn't do is actually have a floating IP address automatically applied to this guy. I didn't, I'm gonna apply one now just to make SSHing into it easier. And I do that by hitting access and security, floating IP address. I'm gonna associate this with the test stack that was just created. Okay, and I've already tweaked my security group. If you worked with uh, OpenStack before, you know by default, the security group that'll be applied to that machine won't allow SSH access. I've already taken care of that. I should now be able to SSH using that heat key into that Ceros machine. So let's see if that is possible. SSH, I'm going to specify that I want to use heatkey.priv. I want to come in as the Ceros user at 172.16. .2.64 is what's been applied to that machine. And there you go. Do I want to accept? Yes, I do. And I'm in. I'm actually in that Cirrus machine at this point. Well, there you go, gang. Heat fundamentals. By now, you should be comfortable working with a template. You should be able to identify parameters in that template. You should be able to code your own parameters, your own values that you want substituted for the default values of those parameters. And finally, you should be confident that you could get heat to successfully create a stack, a set of resources. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. We have lots of free training videos and we're always making new ones. If you're ready to start training with us, head on over to alta3.com chat directly with the salesperson. We'll even give you some remote desktop time for free so that you can play around with OpenStack and see what you're getting into when you train with us. There you go, gang. I hope to see you soon in an Alta 3 research training event.